We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is the Therapy Show Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. So welcome back to the next episode of the Therapy Show Behind Closed Doors with the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones. And what we're going to be looking at in this episode is something a bit different, I think. It's going to be on building your own therapy website. What a wonderful topic. And yes. Thanks for calling me wonderful. I, I was just thinking as you were sitting there, um, how would I introduce you? I think I might introduce you as some welcome to the delicious and exotic Jackie Jones. Oh, way up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, maybe you should have a go at introducing it sometimes yeah, and I'll yeah, let you I call it lots have, of different things. I, 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 I think that's, I was just smiling to myself. Okay. So building your own website. Now, I know we did a podcast on social media, some back in time in our history. Now, this is a specific one on websites. And I think I put I put it because I sort of send most of the titles to Jackie. I included this because I think in 2023, every therapist needs to have a website. Now, yeah, people listening to me can disagree about that. If you look at, though, if you look at or talk to I think most therapists have a website. Yeah. They may never use it. They might say, well, actually, we don't get any class with the website or maybe it's an educational website or whatever it is, but they usually have a website. And um, I would advocate personally that every therapist has one and for lots of different reasons, by the way. Um, okay. we, I could give you six or seven reasons so we could start with the number one reason. Oh. Actually, I'm smiling to myself because what would this is in no linear term because you're on the reality TV programs and I watch many, many of them. They say when they pronounce the winner, they say in no linear, uh, yeah, not, uh, in, not in order of importance, yeah, yeah, not no, <laughs> whatever it is. So, I'm not going to do that, but I will say number one about websites they can be used to get they can be used to attract clients, yeah. Absolutely. Number and two. I think we do need to have an online presence, like you say, yeah. in 2023. I think it's vital. Yeah. yeah so let's come. I'm going to give these, and then we'll come back to them. Yeah. So one is to attract clients. Two, for educational purposes. Yeah. I really, yeah. Three, um, to be able to uh, give information about what clients we work with and we don't work with. Yeah. Four, to provide information on uh, courses, groups, projects, um, services that we might be putting on. Yeah. Five, I think that uh, websites provide an up-to-date extension of our social media platform, which means that our our own visual self or, our, or, or, or in this case our social media presence uh is part of the sort of advertising perinth of um posters in 2023 so i think it's they're very important so let's go through would you like to add another reason for having a website i mean i was going to go back and we can talk about each one um, but I, those are the ones I thought about. Have you got anything to add? I think you've kind of covered everything. I think I think it's a it, it's a good way of getting an email list together of of people. Ah, net, and a good and one I didn't mention, but let's put this on the list. It's a good networking tool. Yes. Yeah. I didn't add that. Great, great. Let's go back to number one. What was number one? Was it um, attracting clients? Yeah. Let's go back to that. So. I have a business website and a personal website. So I have one for the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. Everybody wants to go on it and look at it a model. It's www.mcpt.co.uk. I have one uh, for advertising um, supervision. I forget the time. I forget the actual website of that. I have a personal website called bobcook.org 
Um, so I have several websites. When I started off my own journey before it became Manchester University Psychotherapy, it was way before <laughs> the advent of websites. But as websites became more popular, I think the first website, and it's I don't remember when it was, Jackie, but it's when, when websites started to be used right in its infancy was the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. So um, I, I think my first big website definitely was advertising the courses, the TA courses, the TA training, and that part of it. Um, I didn't use that particular website for advertising clients. But I, I use yellow pages and things like that back then. But I would always recommend the trainees, and I probably did with you, build websites so that people know that you're there yeah, and that you can advertise uh, your services uh, in a constructive way and it will be part of the social media presence. Yeah, because I think nowadays it's really important or... Yeah, it is really important to to brand ourselves to a certain extent. Do you know what I mean? And have a website that says a lot about us as a person and who we are. People buy into that rather than just the therapy, if yeah. that makes sense, I think. Yeah. After you've gone through all these, I, I would like to talk some, about some of the perceived dangers of websites. Yes, absolutely. Let's start off with the ones yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. What was the second one then? Educational. Yeah, so, you know, you might specialise, for example, and be a sex therapist, or you might specialise in eating disorders, or you may specialise as a relationship therapist, or you may specialise in whatever. So often, I think, if you've got a particular specialism, or even if you haven't, but especially if you've got a specialism, I think it's important to put some educational information about your specialism that might attract people who have a certain uh, passion for this in, into your orbit. Yeah. In in the online world, they call it a niche, don't they? Or a niche oh, yeah. or whatever. Do, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like you, your, your people, the, the kind of people that you want to work with. Yeah. So you've got a website, haven't you, Jackie? Yes. Yeah, I've got two. I've got two as well, yeah. So do you... Use it for educational purposes to build up, build up a niche and attract people to the world of your passion. Yeah, yeah, I think it 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 says a lot about me. <laughs> I I do a lot of educational stuff through emails through my email list, but also the blog posts that I put up. Oh, that's how I do a lot of you know educational type stuff is in blog posts. Yeah, in blog posts. Yeah, that's another another add-on to these websites is that you put blogs onto them yeah and people not can not only can the um google or yahoo or whichever sort of operating system come through um but they can find you through the algorithms if you like yeah your passions and world yeah, and like free resources, if I've got any downloads or, you know, things like that, I'll, I think that's what I put under the educational side of things, yeah. Yeah, so I know most of this goes on the MCPT website, educational bit, if you like, but I also have, of course, a YouTube here at bobcook.org, and there's loads of educational videos. Yeah. And... Uh, reviews of psychotherapy books, um, the TA101, how transaction analysis is and how it can be used to change life, um, a lot of information about different educational processes is on my website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And links to different places where you can, it's yeah. like a whole business, really, your website, Absolutely. where you can direct them off, yeah. So I think it's very important to put blogs and all the things we're talking about here to attract people into your world. Yeah. 
absolutely and it, again i think you know the way that because yes it can be visual as in videos but it can also be the way that we talk in in the blog posts and that sort of stuff that people will warm to us hopefully yeah because when i i know i'm not for everybody and that's okay <laughs> You know, some people will be drawn to me and some people will be repelled by me. And that, to me, is okay. Mm, I don't take it personally at all. What was the third thing, though? Um, give information on who we are and who we work with. Yeah, so when, we're tra when we are attracting clients, hopefully, we'll say a little bit about who we are who are qualified or not, or uh, professional history, and the sort of category of clients that we might be able to offer our services to. Yeah. With depression, or we work with anxiety, or we work with eating disorders, or we work with relationships, or whatever it is. So people have an idea, not only yourself, but also the areas that we can offer our services to. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, as you're talking, what are the tabs across the top of my website? And I think the first one is is about me, where it's like that I trained at the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy, you know, between 2012 and 2016. And, you know, the areas where I, I would say that I'm working in. Yeah. So, yeah, th there's, you know, that side of things there, definitely. Mm. And that will really help people uh, in terms of not only knowing a little bit of more about you professionally but also know uh, the areas that you work in yeah and or, i think it's, it's worth mentioning as well in, in that section you know how we work whether we work online or face-to-face -face or telephone or zoom or you, there's that many different ways that you can actually connect with clients now oh that's really important what you've just said there by the way because we have the rise of what we call Zoom therapists. Yeah. Now, it's not an area I particularly want to work in, but in terms of people who are, haven't got accessibility to therapy, uh, or people who've got social anxiety, people yeah. who find it hard to get out, for example, then it's good that they can find therapists who can offer different types of services, and they'll only know about that if a person's got a website. Absolutely. I thought I'd never do Zoom, and yet I did it for for a good couple of years. You know, even when we could go back to seeing people, I stayed on Zoom for a while. I think the only type of therapy that I wouldn't do, well, there's two, I think. One is telephone, and the other is text therapy. Mm. I really don't know how text therapy works. But... Well, you mean messenger therapy is... Same thing as in message. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't sit well with me. So those those are the two that I don't think I'd ever venture down. But never say never. Who but knows? In ten years, you put your services, whatever they are, on the website so people can find you. Yes. Yeah. And the different ways. I think I've got something ways to work with me. And you, yeah. you, do you know what I mean? The different ways that people can connect and work with me. Yeah. So for the people listening to this, just think. If they put their name into Google, would their websites, would their social media, would their profiles come straight up? Yeah. Certainly, if you put Bob Cook into it, they would. Put Jackie Jones into it, they do. And I think that that's important in terms of visibility, in terms of people being able to find you. I think it's an interesting thing to do as a therapist is type in your name and see what actually comes up and how far down the list you are with things because, you know, Google ratings and rankings and SEO and all this malarkey stuff, you've got to think what a person is going to type in for your kind of therapy and are you going to come up in that list because that's how we get clients a lot of the time. All my referrals now are through Google. So it's really important what you're saying here. Yeah. What's the next one I said on the list? Uh, the next one is courses, groups. What, what, what kind of how people can work with you? Whether you offer courses or whether you work with groups, individuals. Oh, right. Yeah. That's the next thing. If you are going to move in to be a a couples therapist or a group therapist, 
or you're going to offer webinars or if yeah. you're going to offer blogs or whatever it is, I think that's really important to go on the website because it's in the same vein. People then know you. There's more visibility. They yeah. know what you offer. And that's when you're going to start getting the referrals. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Clients, of course, can go on other websites that, like Counseling Directory, like Psychology Today. I mean, there's other websites, of course, which provide a whole sort of directory that people can search on. But I think it's really important that even if you're on those directories, you put your website down. Yeah. Because when you go on a directory and you pay, I don't know, thirty-two pounds a month or whatever it is on the directory, you can only put so many sentences and words in. Yeah. So if you can say, well, please go to my website to get more about in terms of content, services, specialisms, and what I offer, then they can go to the website and have a far bigger sense of view and content, and can even take the time to look through the website. So it's you can go on all these directories, but it really is advantageous if when you go on them, you can point them to your website. Yeah, I think, it, you know, following on from what you're saying as well. Yes, you can be on, you know, the, these psychotherapy directories and everything. And I did used to point people to that. But it's nice to do a search and see the individual person. And following on from that, what I was then thinking was, I have testimonials on my website as well, which is a bit iffy <laughs> because often if you've got a client, they're not going to want to give you a testimonial. Obviously it's not, you know, a lot of people don't want to advertise the fact that they've seen a therapist. So it can be difficult sometimes to get people to leave a review for you. It's not like you buy a Hoover and they give it five-star rating, <laughs> but if you can, that's helpful as well. Cause it gives you, reliability somehow i think it gives you a sense of gravitas mm, that's a bit of a heavy word for me that Bob. i was thinking more reliability <laughs> <laughs> it gives you that sense of professional gravitas yes it, yeah and so you've had people who've been really proud or they've achieved a, a lot from the services you offer and they would highly recommend you yeah. And if ever I do do it, I always let them know that it will be confidential and I will just put client A or client B. I, I don't generally put their names to it unless they expressly say it's OK to do that. Yeah. So that's because I don't want to run out of time this podcast. Um, what's the next one, if I've said anything? Um, you, you put up to date extension of social media and then networking tool. Very important in terms of networking. Yeah. Because if you can network with, a, you know, colleagues of a similar likeness or similar path they're going down, you can then have a whole network of people who will be on your side in terms of building the website, the links, the all the different uh, websites uh, can promote each other and you'll get more many more uh likes if you like in the whole social media world and people are going to know you and your visibility is going to go much bigger if you have a good networking absolutely yeah i know you network extremely well i like to think so yeah oh you and do it's 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 a big pond do you, do you know i think some people can be quite insular in, in being a psychotherapist because they think you know, people are going to poach their clients or I don't know. For me, I think it's really important. I go to a networking group, not with therapists, but it's it's called Unique Ladies and it's a local networking group that's just women business owners. Because if you're working on your own, which you generally are as a therapist, it's just you and the client, it can be a very lonely place sometimes. Yeah, that's the other, that's what I'm saying. Networking is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. If you're working for a business or you're working in the NHS and you, you, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of you around. That's one of the things with MIP. There's a lot of therapists all in one place. So you can, you know, have peer support and all that sort of stuff. But for a lot of us in private practice, we work on our own. Absolutely correct. 
So there are all the reasons. Now, let's talk about some. Uh, and let, uh, before I do, I want to say the positives for me largely outweigh the negatives, I'm going to say. But go on. But there are negatives. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll start off with some. My, my, yeah, okay. And that is pe clients that have got to me or people have got to me who are psychotherapists. They they finish their training and they're encouraged for websites and things like that. And they say to th me things or to their trainers, things like, well, you know, I have imposter syndrome or, you know, I, I can't possibly be visible. Yeah. But, uh, so it's a psychological process. They often need to go to therapy to deal with that. So I just want to flag that for people who do have very acute anxiety about what they might say in inverted commas, exposing themselves yeah. or being visible or uh, posture syndrome, all these different things, which means they often paralyze themselves or feel incapacitated in the world of building websites. I did that for years, Bob. Oh, did you? I, I did. You look quite shocked. <laughs> because you're very visible now. I, I am now, but for years, it, I, I was that person hiding from people and then wondering why nobody found me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic to come through that. Yeah. It, it, it's been a journey, put it that way. But, How did you manage to break that block? Um, I've, I've, I've jumped hurdles since the past 12 months with my diagnosis. I think nothing scares me now. But it was, it was definite imposter syndrome and it was it sounds really weird but a fear of being thought of as an expert uh that's not weird i understand that 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 really did scare the bejesus out of me <laughs> i'm certainly glad you've come through that and you know i put jackie jones and i can see how uh visible and successful you are and the amount oh, thank you. of um, information and support you give to people so i think that's i need to congratulate you Thank you very much. That means a lot coming from you. Yeah. But yes, I do get that imposter syndrome with, you know, you know, especially a newly qualified psychotherapist. Yeah. Interesting, because if you take me back till I was 35, so that's many years ago, I'm 72 now, can't even work out the maths. But when I started to advertise for clients, I did yellow pages way before internet and websites. Then I, and I've always as I've said in another website, other podcast, I mean, I've always put money into advertising. And for whatever reasons, I've not had those fears. I've always, I think it's because I've always been a risk taker. Yeah. I've always been someone that, you know, yeah, that, that's it at the end of the day. I think being a risk taker, and I have, I'm on the other opposite side of that spectrum, but I know lots of people who, who, who with reference to what you've just talked about and so I've always I've always done that but um so therefore people think of me uh oh you're all over the internet or you you know interestingly though once I got the Manchester Institute of Psychotherapy it was Manchester Institute of Psychotherapy which was all over the internet and then they say oh well but but you are Bob Cook <laughs> That's you. <laughs> uh, but I, but there is those people, and I, I, thanks for saying where you come from on this. It's, I found that very moving. And those people who have, have those challenges, have those struggles. That's that bit. Another thing is, and, uh, is, and I'm always talking to trainees about this, um, and you hear this quite a lot, or I do, is where clients put in their therapist's name into Google or whatever it is, yeah. or Jackie Jones, Clark, Bob Cook, or come on, whatever. And if that person has put too much personal information about themselves in it, then, you know, there can be a negative side to that. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. And for the highly disordered clients, particularly, you can wake up, especially if you put your address and where you are. I mean, I've got the Manchester Institute of Psychotherapy. I've never, ever put my personal address down. Yeah. Um, but you open the door, get out, and 
that clown has put a tent on some ground near you and has started, yeah. you know. That's the downside of, of being self-employed and working from home is you, you know, people know where you live. Yeah. yeah. And, and that was a big fear for me when I first started. Because you come, it's not you being visible then, it's your home being visible. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would say to people, don't give too much information out about you on a personal level. Yeah. Professional. Yeah. Yeah. Much as you can. Yes. Yeah. And I I, I think I do. There's, you, there, there is a big picture behind me, <laughs> but you can't really see, you know, that th it, it is somebody that I'm related to in there. But in my therapy room, there is nothing that identifies me in that room if that makes sense it's, it's really, really I think bland it's really, as far as that's concerned i think it's really important on social media websites that you think about this and this, but i know it's not that i'm not i'm extending to social media a bit here and i know i did a podcast on it but you see once that information goes even onto your websites really then it can be picked up by facebook it can be picked up by uh all these platforms that we're talking about from twitter and instagram and whatever it is and suddenly you're far more visible than you ever imagined you would be yeah so i want to say keep personal information to a minimum definitely yeah stay stay behind a professional curtain yeah yeah that doesn't mean you can't say I'm a warm-hearted therapist that works from a relational perspective. That's different. But yeah. if you're going to start talking about your family and your kids and where you live, that is not a good thing to do on a website or on social because, as I say, it can just be picked up on so many platforms. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I do share a lot about me on, on social media. Not on my website, but I do on social media, yeah. I mean, we're talking about websites, and so I, I just wanted to say a bit about what people need to think about when they're building websites, positive and perhaps a bit more negative. Yeah, the other thing that I, might be worth mentioning as well for the websites is scheduling and taking payments that can be oh, done yes. automatically. On I, I like a good old fashioned paper diary. I, I, even though I do schedule things, you know, online, I always have a paper diary as well. That's just how I like to work. But that's a really, really good point because there's many therapists and some I know could pick six off the top of my head and do exactly what I do. They have a calendar in there. They do scheduling. Yeah. Uh, and they use their websites for almost like a scheduling diary. Yeah, yeah. And it's fine if, if that's the way that you work, but I, I like to have mine so that I can look at it. But, you know, being able to take payments directly on your website as well, you know, th there's yeah. so many things that you can do through a website now that makes the business side of things. Because to be fair, when we're self-employed, we're business owners. We're not just psychotherapists. We're running a business as well. So, you know, having a, a website that works for you, I think is really important. It's it, yeah. It's a, another sense of professionalism. Yeah, it's a sense of visibility, and you can use the website in all these ways: educational, or, or therapeutic diaries, rescheduling, advertising your services, all the things we've talked about. And in two thousand and twenty-three, I think it's very important thing for therapists who wish to make this their professional career to consider yeah yeah and you can do it you know you, do, you, do, you don't need a, a massive grand thing that costs you know five thousand pounds to set up or whatever there are there are cheap ways of setting it up so that you've just got a one-page website to start off with and then you know as you grow so does your website yeah because it can be really daunting. I thought it was daunting when I first got one. Just even buying a domain name, it's a big decision to make. You know, what, what title are you giving yourself? What are you calling your business? It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to say my favourite phrase. Go on. <laughs> Building a website should be a process. Not an event. Not an event. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I'm going to have that on my tombstone. <laughs> this was a process, not an event. <laughs> yeah. 
bit by bit. I agree with you completely. Yeah. And sometimes I think we, we look online at other people's websites and that for me was probably where some of my imposter syndrome came from it was like um, there's no way that I'm ever going to be able to achieve that or do that or just be authentically you and start wherever you are and build up great I enjoyed talking about that me too thank you so what we're going to do next time, which is another interesting topic, you give me such wonderful <laughs> content to work with, Bob, is conquering the toxic parental dialogue in the therapy process. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. Oh A good my one. Gosh. That's where I started in my first therapy 35 years ago or 45 years ago. So I'm, I'm oh, what a wonderful title. You co you come up with some good ones to be fair, don't you, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look forward to that. Okay, doc. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Talk soon. Bye. You've been listening to the Therapy Show, behind closed doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode. <laughs>